I got to spend the morning with Susan Tribodeau and I learned all about the Toy Fox Terrier. In this episode, we're going to learn how to show groom this fun and lively breed with the absolute smallest list of grooming supplies I have ever seen to date. Four items, people. Four. Hang tight for all the deets. That was it. <laughs> There's a reason I got out of coated breed. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. You asked and I listened. I have been filming a stockpile of more grooming episodes and they are all jam-packed with so many cool tips and techniques that can be used on a plethora of breeds. So, comment below with what breeds you'd like to see, like and share this video with your friends, and of course subscribe if you haven't yet so that you can ring that little bell. That way you don't miss one episode. Yes, you heard me right. She uses four items. But as with most breeds, we are starting with the bath. It says in our standard that they are to show that terrier attitude and personality. And it's never to be deprecated. So, you know, they go out and they dig. And they play. And they chase squirrels. And they eat lizards. And I had one that was playing, trying to eat a slug this morning. Ooh. So they get dirty. Yeah. So yeah. we get lots of baths. All right, let's do toenails. So Susan shared some amazing information on doing your dog's nails. So I'm going to do a completely separate episode just on that. But until then, let's get back to grooming. Look at and, all that. And we do this because we have them at the back. That I wash my dogs in the sink. Right. And I, I, I got this at Royal Cannon to try it, and I really like it. And somebody told me to try this one, but I found it was a little drying on my dog's coat. And I like to use puppy shampoos on the puppies. Right. Or if they're just really dirty and I don't not so much worry about getting their coats white, but they've been digging in the dirt and they dug to China and they're just filthy. Right. And but this has actually been my go-to and you can almost get it anywhere. It smells great because their bodies on a Toy Fox Terrier have to be at least 50% white. Okay. So, you know, you want to make sure that that white gets white. White. And so when you can see. Yeah. Smell, smell it. it. Oh, 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 that smells good. It does smell <laughs> good, doesn't yeah. it? For grooming, we don't have nearly the huge amount of stuff that other people have because this is a really easy breed to do. So, I used to groom dogs. I had cockers for 20 years. I have all the big clippers. But what I discovered is this $9.99 clipper at Walmart in the pet section is all I need for my toy foxes for doing their ears and their face. There we go. It takes a double A battery. Oh, nice. So it's very portable too. Nice. So this is my spare. Um, I haven't opened that one yet. You can see I have a number of them. Right. And oh. it's a matter of me figuring out which one's got the best battery right now. That one. That one, there you go. <laughs> oh wow, and it's very lightweight. Yep. Nice. They get borrowed a lot too, because people will people come up to the ring and go, oh my gosh, do you have any clippers with you? And of course I do, because if it's in my bag, right. because it's so small, so on a toy fox, and, and just in case anybody who's watching who's not into show dogs, this is a belly band. Right. And they, it's used for little boy dogs so that they don't forget their housebreaking manners in the house. One of our little girls is in heat, and sometimes they forget because they're their boy dogs and they want to go and mark the furniture. So the ones who are most likely to mark the furniture wear the belly band. Is that you? And Barnum hates the belly band. <laughs> Ricky doesn't care. Barnum hates it. So you can see on him, some people don't even bother to take it off, but you can see he's got hair inside his ears. He's got black whiskers on the tan. So for him, I'm going to come along here and I'm going to remove that hair that's inside that ear. And I'm just going to take it down that line. And then he's got, if you leave the hair there, I call that old man hair. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, yeah. that is exactly what that looks like. Yep. And I take that off so it makes a little bit better impression of their ear when they put their ears up. And then I do a little more cleaning along the edges there. Not a whole lot. I don't go all the way up inside the ear, just along the bottoms there. So. Oh, yeah. Can you see the difference between yep. the two ears? Mm -hmm. Cookie, 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 cookie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you can see that, you know, it, it just opens up their ear, makes their ear look prettier mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. my mind. And it makes them look a little more polished. Yeah. Um, some people don't do it, they don't bother, and that's okay. There's nothing in the standard says they have to do it. But in my mind, if you're wanting to 
really be competitive, you're going to take those extra steps. And it doesn't take that long on this breed to do those extra steps. And I teach them when they're puppies, so they don't really have any right. you know, great angst about it, not hurting them. And the nice thing about it being portable when they're puppies is that if I have to like hold them like this to get it done, it's very portable to move without worrying about a cord. Right, right. Then I'm going to get all those little whispery things that are growing in all the strange places. That's an old lady thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you, can you see on there now that the, it cleans up his muzzle oh, yeah. a little bit, having no mm -hmm. black hairs poking out? Yep. Huge difference. Yep. And usually, unless it's more than a four-day weekend, doing it the night before a show is sufficient to take us for the whole weekend. You know, I might on a Sunday look at him and go, hmm, maybe I'll knock those whiskers one more time. But for the most part, that's sufficient to do him. Now, on him, he's got a beautiful coat that needs very little cleanup. I'll show you another one that does gets a lot more cleanup. But he's got the kind of coat we want. It's, it's satiny, it's close, it's tight. Mm, yeah. It's very smooth. So there's really not a whole lot of cleanup I might... I might take some thin ends here. I've got two kinds here. I've got the, the double and the, the single, okay. the 26 tooth with one side, mm -hmm. which is actually the ones I like best anyway. But I, I might come along here and clean a little of this up before a show, just if he's getting, has a lot of it sticking out. Sometimes they have almost a rough here. Mm -hmm. And if you look and it's sticking out behind his ears, you might think that's a little distracting for the judge. Mm -hmm. So I might come along here and clean that up just a little bit where that rough is. And then on this breed, yeah, this, the tail. Notice the little tip, the little tip. The tail. Yep. That's not pretty. So I like to take my clippers and come along and just very gently run up the bottom and, and get that. And okay. then I'll take my scissors and I'll just blend it all in so that he doesn't have that little yeah. arrow sticking off the t end of his tail. You know, if he's if it's uh, if he's got any stray hairs on the side, I would come along here and just do this. Right. And then the other thing on this breed is you'll notice we have these flying hairs. Yes. Now there's some people will clip that, but I think that makes a choppy look. That's when I'm most likely to use my uh, double. Okay, your doubles. Okay. Cleaning shears, and I will just come along and I'll just shorten those, just to clean it up a little bit. Can you see the difference mm -hmm. now between the hair, oh, one yeah. with the hair, yeah. and the one where I just cleaned it up just a little bit. Yep, huge difference. Yeah. So. Well, not huge, side, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's the little things, you know, when you get into there, and I'm an owner handler. So, you know, I've, I've got to be on my toes when I'm up against the professionals because they know all these tricks. Right, right. They know how to do all these things to make the dogs look their best. So if I don't make my dog look its best, and I'm thinking I'm going to go up and win against big name handlers, then I'm putting myself at a disadvantage. So yeah. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing everything I can yeah. to be as competitive in the ring as possible. So just a little cleanup, nothing big. He doesn't have any real hairs on his belly I need to clean. Yeah, no. So other than maybe coming along and cleaning just a little bit more on that, he's ready he's, for a bath. And he's he, ready for a bath. And he's done because we did his nails this morning. And I'm going to assume that you let them air dry. Um, I will towel dry them, Okay. and then I'll put them on the floor and watch them race around the sofa and, and jump across my husband if he's watching TV and him complaining about wet dogs, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if it's winter time, I may take a blow dryer just to get some of the wet off so they're not chilled. Right, okay. But for the most part in Florida, the house stays at you know almost 80 degrees. Right. We have it set at 78 and it's yeah. fine. Yeah. So, they're, you know, it's, it's very easy breed to get ready for the show. Now you will see some people that do a lot of chalking. I don't chalk. When I wash my dogs, they go out and I'll show you the yard. They dig. You don't see a whole lot of staining on those dogs. No. If you've got a good coat and you don't live in red clay, because that'll stain anything, you shouldn't have to have a whole lot of chalk. Right, yeah. And when I first got in the breed, everybody's talking about chalking and I heard about all the chalks. Right. I don't chalk. You don't need to. I don't need to. Yeah, no. I have very rarely do I have to do anything yeah. that's chalking. You will see some people, this breed grays early. Yeah. And you will see some people, here you can get down buddy. 
you can see she used to have deep, rich color. She's four. And you can see it's she's all, already gray. Yeah. And our breed standard says to the judges, that's not a fault. Okay. Do Good. not yeah. analyze it. Right. It is not a fault. It is just normal for the breed. Now, this bitch, if you notice on her, she's got more coat. She doesn't have as slick and pretty a coat. Right. As the other dog did. So, on her, and particularly in the wintertime, I'll actually take my thinning shear and I'll card her. Ah. Now, I'm probably not going to get a whole lot off right now because it's summer in the wintertime. I can cover this table with the card, with the, the hair off with of the With the hair off, yeah. So, that's what I would do with her. And then, some dogs, and she's one of them, you can see this. She gets this hair. That, yes. I have a chihuahua that does that. Oh, yes. So after I would bathe her and then wrap her with a towel to get it to lay down, then I would come back and her sire is a multiple best in show dog and apparently he had the same thing. Okay. And the handler for that person, I mean that dog, showed me that then she just comes along and carefully, flatly goes over, thins it. Yeah. I prefer to actually do it like this, but she did it the other direction. But just really carefully, just shorten that up just a little bit. You don't want it choppy, but you want it to lay a little more flat because from across the ring, it looks like there's a lump there. Right, and there's not. And there's, it's just, there's not. There is definitely not. So, and then on her, what I would do is I would take the clippers, and you see all this hair right here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right here. Oh, yeah. I would take the clippers and just clean that up a little bit, right? Just on the belly. Now, right. She's had puppies before, so she's a little poochy, but... I wouldn't go up to the sides of the abdomen, but I would just clean that just up a that little bit with there. those clippers so that when you're looking at her, you don't see all this white hair sticking underneath there. But she has more coat. So on her, I would also come along and I would clean some of this up with this mm -hmm. scissors. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the rough I was talking about. Right, right, on right. Her. Yep. I would take that off with the thinning scissors so that it doesn't distract from the, the smooth angles, the smooth line of her neck. So that you can see that that would probably yeah, clear that up show a little the bit, whereas the other side, it's still sticking up right there. Yep. Yeah, you can see the difference right there for sure. Yep. Yeah, this bitch has won best of opposite sex at the Nationals twice and best opposite sex at Royal Cannon. And mm, she is four nice. points from her silver, so she's going back out to get her last four points and then she'll retire for good. Yeah. But sweet baby girl. Aw. She's had one litter, uh, beautiful puppies. In fact, <laughs> this one is her daughter and looks just like her. This is Heart. And the reason she's named Heart is. Aw, that's, that's adorable. Oh, that's awesome. She has a heart on, on her, her chest. chest. Pretty easy, right? I was rather impressed. But there's more to share about the Toy Fox Terrier, so be on the lookout for future episodes where we talk about how to show them in the ring, appropriate collars and leads, and what to give them as chewies. Yep, I am starting to build breed libraries. So, hang tight until then!